Today we're going to be talking about the slope of a straight line. We'll discuss equations of lines, some of the properties of slopes, uh, calculations involving the slopes, slope is interpreted as a rate of change, and then what are the applications of slope? Why do we really care about them? So here we have the definition of the equation of non-vertical lines. But what does all this garbledy gook really mean? Well, it's really saying the non-vertical line L, so we'll call this line L, has an equation of the form y equals mx plus b, which I think we've heard of before. Now, the number m, that represents the slope, so how steep the line is. And the point b, or 0 comma b, is called the y-intercept. So where does it intercept the y-axis? And we'll refer to this form of the line as the slope-intercept equation because it gives us the slope and the intercept of the line. So the slope-intercept equation of the line is really powerful because we can easily graph and interpret things about the line. So for instance, which one of the following graphs has a slope of negative 2 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 1? Well, if I'm saying that the slope is negative 2, we can essentially rule out these ones because they have a slope of 2. And then we want to figure out where the y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 1. Well, the only then final solution would be this one because it has a slope of negative 2 and the y-intercept is 0, negative 1. One of the most important properties of slope is that given any two points on a line, we can compute the slope of that line. So for instance here, we're given the point x1, y1, and we're also given the point x2, y2 on this line. So what we can do is we want to figure out the slope of our line by being the rise over the run. So the rise here is this element, the y2 minus y1, that's how steep the incline is, over the change in our x, so the x2 minus x1. So that's why we get the slope is equal to y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1. And that'll give us the slope of our line. Another important property of slope is that given a point on the line and the slope of the line, we can compute the equation. So for instance, note here, if I have this fixed line with this slope, right, if I put this point, let's put it at the point 2 comma 2, well, I can only form one line with this slope that will go through that point. And so I can compute the equation of a line that would go through that point with the slope. So for instance, let's say I have the slope, if I said the slope were equal to negative 2 or negative 1. And it goes through the point, so the x1, y1 that it goes through is at 2 comma 2. So I can compute what this equation of this line is by saying y minus y1 should equal our slope times x minus x1. And this is referred to as point slope form. So y minus y1, well that's 2, equals my slope, which is negative 1, times x minus my x1 is 2. So now I have the equation of the line. Some other properties of slopes are that slopes, lines with the same slope, so these two lines have the same slope, they're parallel. Also, if I have a line with a slope of, let's say, m depicted here, well, a line that's perpendicular to this, something like that, is going to have a slope of negative 1 over m. So that the product of their two slopes is negative 1. So now we want to calculate the equation of a line going through two points. Well, we learned earlier that if we're given two points going through a line, I can figure out its slope. And the slope is going to be the change in y, so y2 minus y1, all over x2 minus x1. Okay. 
Well, so I can consider this point here to be my x1, y1. And I consider this point here to be my x2, y2. And now if I want to calculate the slope, well, I just need to plug in those numbers. So my slope is going to equal negative 3 minus negative 2 all over 2 minus 1. So the slope here is negative 3 plus 2, negative 1, all over 1. So my slope is negative 1. All right. So I know then that my slope is negative 1. I can just sort of set that aside. And now I know that if I have a slope and the point, I can figure out the equation of the line. So again, the equation of the line is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, my y1 is negative 2, and my slope is negative 1, and x1 is 1. So here I have the equation of the line, y plus 2 equals negative 1 times x minus 1. And if I want to simplify that to be this, to be slope-intercept form, well, then all I need to do is say, okay, now I have my y plus 2 equals negative x plus 1. y equals, I'll subtract that 2 over to the other side. And now I know my slope is still negative 1, and the y-intercept is the point 0, comma, negative 1. One of the most important things about slope as it relates to calculus is that it's considered a rate of change. So earlier when we calculated our slope being y2 minus y1 all over x2 minus x1, well, another way we could rephrase that is to say that the slope is the change in y, y2 minus y1, all over the change in x. So here it's now, it's a rate of change. So as x changes from x2 to x1, y is changing from y2 to y1. So how fast is this line changing? Well, it's changing at a rate of m. So when we have linear functions, we can say that the rate of change is their slope. And that'll be important later. It has many applications. So let's explore some applications of slope. One application of slope we'll be concerned about is manufacturing, looking at fixed and marginal cost. So a manufacturer finds that the total cost of producing X units of his commodity is 2X plus $1,000. So we want to know what the economic significance of the y-intercept and the slope of the line y equaling 2X plus 1,000 is. Well, we learned in earlier in this video that the y-intercept is really where the equation of our line will intercept the y-axis. So here at 1,000, I would expect that my line is going to go through it. And so what does that really mean? Well, it really is where x equals 0. So if I have my line, let's call it L of x equals 2x plus 1,000. Well, L of 0 is really where we're producing no commodity. So here we have just 1,000. And this is referred to as the fixed cost. So fixed cost is anything uh, above and beyond producing things. So it's the insurance, the upkeep, uh, anything to do with that. And the slope, so if let's say I produce one more unit, one more than zero, so two plus a thousand, well now I have a thousand and two. So that slope really means how much it costs to produce one additional item. And so we can look at that and say, okay, if I want to produce four more items, well, it's going to cost eight dollars. And so that slope is really an indication of what the marginal cost is.